Hi, I'm Jeanette with the NSF Center for Aerosol Impacts on Chemistry of the Environment, and we are a bunch of scientists who do chemistry to try and understand how and why aerosols are such an important part of the climate and environment on our planet. But what's an aerosol? So an aerosol is any tiny bit of stuff that becomes suspended in the air. It can be things like ash or dust, sea spray, anything that's small enough and light enough to become suspended and float in the air. Now we really care about aerosols and at case, the scientists are really interested in understanding as much as we possibly can about these teeny tiny particles. But to do that, they actually need to go out and collect aerosols, right? So how do they get these aerosols out of the air so that we can take them back into the lab and study them? So we're gonna go over to Catherine, who's out in the field now collecting samples. Hey everyone, Catherine here. Um, I'm in the car heading down to Imperial Beach to do some air sampling. All right, I am up at the top of the um, Silver Strand Lifeguard Tower. As you can see we are up here and I am changing out the filters for um, the sampling. So you can see out here we've got our sampling set up on the edge of the lifeguard tower um, and it's in this Rubbermaid tub to keep it dry. Alright, so inside the box we've got a pump and then the pump is going to connect with by these tubing to the filter holders. So these hold a filter. We pull air through the filter for 24 hours, and then we pull that filter out and analyze it to see what's in the air that's coming from the ocean. Thanks, Catherine. That's so awesome. How great that we can use those instruments to collect all of the types of aerosols that are coming off of the ocean and learn so much more about what is in that sea spray. Now, at home, you may not have these fancy science instruments, but that doesn't mean that you can't collect and learn about the aerosols that are around you. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to build our own particle collector. Now, you're gonna need a couple of things in order for this, uh, to make this work. They're pretty simple things. You can probably find them in your house. The very first you're gonna need is some kind of cup um, just something that you can use. You're going to actually use it to trace the shape of the cup. You're going to need some scissors, a pencil. Um, you're going to need some tape, and it needs to be clear tape. So packing tape works the best, but you could also use something like scotch tape. It just needs to be clear. And then you're going to need a piece of paper. I've used a piece of cardstock paper. It's a little bit easier to work with, but regular people will do just fine. All right, so go ahead and grab your materials and then we'll come back together and we'll start making our particle collector. Okay, now that we've got the items we need to make our particle collector, let's get started. So the first thing you wanna do is label your piece of paper. So just right at the top, write something such as particle collector. All right, now once you've done that, we are going to go to the next step, which is to create the areas where we will actually be collecting the aerosol particles. So for that, we're gonna use the cup uh, and you're gonna to wanna to trace the shape of your cup um, a couple of times on the piece of paper. I'm gonna do it three times. And the reason that we're using a cup to trace this is that we want each of these um, areas that we create where we're gonna collect the particles to be the same size. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and trace my cup a couple of times. One. Two, three. There we go. Now, once you have those circles traced on your piece of paper, um, the next step is actually to cut them out. So you're gonna cut out the paper that's inside of the circle so you're left with a hole in the paper. All right, so let's go ahead and do that step. Okay, there we go. Now I've cut out my three different areas that will eventually become the place where I collect the aerosol particles. Now before we move on to adding the tape, we need to think about and design our experiment. So you need to think about a couple of different things. 
Um, the first is where do you want to investigate? Where do you want to look and see what aerosol particles are around? So for me, I'm going to choose three different locations. All right. And that's where I'm going to investigate. So I think I'm going to do them all um, inside or near my house. So the first location I think I will investigate is just in the living room. And then I'm going to compare that to, let's say, um, the bathroom. And then let's compare that to what it's like out on my um, balcony. All right, so what I've done is I've labeled each of my different um, circles with those different locations. Okay, the next thing you need to think about is how long do you want to collect um, your particles for? How long? So we can do something like an hour, you could do 24 hours, you could do several days, whatever you think is a good amount of time. Um, and what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to collect for three hours. At each location, I'm going to collect particles for three hours. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down on my piece of paper as well. So I'll write uh, collection duration um, three hours. Okay, there we go. So now I know what I'm going to do and I can go ahead and start by investigating in one of my locations, right? I can only do one location at a time. So I'm going to start with my very top one, which is the living room. And in order to start this investigation, what I need to do is add tape. So I'm going to put tape onto the back side of my paper so that the sticky side is facing up. All right. And when that sticky side is facing up, it's that sticky surface that's going to collect our particles. So how you want to do that is to very carefully uh, get some tape. and put it onto the back of your circle. And you want to be careful to not touch um, the exposed sticky side of the tape, right? Otherwise you'll get your fingerprints on it and you can add um, particles that aren't actually being collected in the area. So be careful not to touch the tape. And you're going to want to add tape until you cover the whole um, empty part of just one circle, just the first place that you're going to investigate. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, now that I've finished adding my sticky sticky tape on there, I can go ahead and place this uh, particle collector in that location for the time that I selected. So I'm gonna go place this into the, my living room for three hours. And we'll come back um, at the end of that three hour time. Okay. So I've been collecting particles, um, air particles in my living room for my three hour time frame, And now what I want to do is I need to trap the particles that I have collected onto this piece of tape so I can move on to my next location. And in order to do that, all I need to do is put some tape over the top of this, right? So I'm going to put some tape down, um, so that the sticky side is down now and it will trap the particles in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, there we go. Now my uh, circle area is no longer sticky, right? I've covered it up with some tape and all the particles that I did collect in the living room in that three hour time are now stuck in there. And I can go ahead and proceed and do the same exact thing for the other two locations. All right, once you've finished with your three locations, now it's time to look at the results to analyze the data that we've gotten. Right? So you can do this in a couple of different ways. The first is look at the three different circles. Are there visible particles in all of them? Are there some that have more particles or less? Do they have different colors? Do they have different textures? Right? So for each of the different locations, I encourage you to look and write down what you observe, right? Document your observations. This is what we do as scientists in order to learn new things about the environment all around us. And maybe this gives you some more questions that you want to ask other locations or different time frames that you want to look at and see what kind of aerosol particles are in those locations. 